Well, there have been celebrations in South Sudan today after the country's president, Salva Kiir, and the head of the country's main rebel group, Riyak Kutmacha. There are the two men. They signed a final ceasefire and power-sharing agreement today. Now, in 2015, a similar accord was signed, but less than a year later, fighting broke out. Well, this particular deal will see Mr. Macha return to government as one of five vice presidents. Beryl Wambani has the story. For the past five years, these two men have stood on opposing sides of a war that has killed tens of thousands of people. But President Salva Kiir, along with former Vice President and rebel leader Riek Machar, sat side by side to sign a peace-sharing deal. The accord will restore Riek Machar as President Kiir's deputy, while appointing four other Vice Presidents and adding new posts for ministers and lawmakers. To unite our people and work for peaceful transfer of power through the ballot boxes rather than through the bullet, the bullet uh, and then uh, through the barrel of the gun. A similar power sharing agreement was signed in 2015 but collapsed a year later with Mr. Machar fleeing Juba on foot. I would urge again the heads of state and government of IGAT to focus after this, on the implementation of the agreement. Jubilant crowds and businesses are shut in South Sudan's capital, Juba, as people celebrate the signing of a power-sharing deal aimed at ending the brutal five-year civil war. The young people here want peace. We need development. We need education. So politicians should stop the war. We want peace to come in South Sudan because people are suffering. Roads are blocked. No school. School is there, but money is not enough to pay school children in the school. Foods are not there. Children cannot study because they are hungry. South Sudan is rich in oil, but its economy has been devastated by the conflict. The signing took place in Sudan's capital, Khartoum, and was brokered by Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir, who said South Sudan will start pumping oil to Sudan in September. The warring parties now have three months to form a transitional government, which will then hold power for three years and eventually usher in South Sudan's first elections since it seceded from Sudan in July 2011. Beryl Lombani, BBC. OK, let's discuss this further. Peter Martel is a journalist and an author. He spent uh, more than a decade in South Sudan. So really, your take on this is going to be interesting, uh, Peter. First off, lots of these deals haven't worked in the past. However, Mr Keir, this time around, has said that it will work, um, primarily because it hasn't been imposed on the two leaders. What hope do you have for the deal this time around? Well, I think there's always it's always important to have hope, and you know the, the optimism shown on the streets of Juba today is a sign of you know how important people want to feel this is. And and but the bigger picture is that obviously there have been deals before, um, and they have collapsed spectacularly. And what this deal puts on the table does not differ massively uh, from, from past deals. So it's unclear quite how this deal will uh, uh, succeed when others have failed. But if the willingness of the leaders and the elites who have signed this is behind it, then hopefully, um, you know, then steps forward can be made and peace can be pushed forward in South Sudan. Yeah, Mr Machar did speak about political will and its place in the success of this deal. How much is at stake for these two countries? Because you have to ask yourself, why is this happening now? I think uh, uh, the world and South Sudan has become exasperated at this war and South Sudan is completely broken um, physically and economically. Um, the people have fled South Sudan um, and those who are left are suffering in, in incredible, um, despicable conditions. Um, economically, South Sudan is on its knees and um, both the government in Juba 
Peter, it looks like uh, we've lost you for a moment. Um, we'll give you a couple of seconds to reconnect, but essentially Peter Martel there is a journalist. He's written a book. Um, he's also an author on South Sudan and spent some 10 years uh, in the country, but essentially giving us a bit of analysis there um, as to the future of this uh, latest power-sharing agreement between um, Mr. Macha and uh, Mr. Keir. OK, you're watching Focus on Africa. Let's just remind you of the other stories that are making the headlines across the continent and to Ethiopia first, where the government has sent a high-level delegation to Eritrea for talks with a rebel group fighting for self-rule from Ethiopia. It comes as the regional president of the Somali region in the eastern part of Eritrea handed over power and agreed to step down. There has been a wave of ethnic violence since last Friday. Five police have been killed in fresh violence in Western Cameroon, where English-speaking separatists have declared an independent state. Uh, four officers were killed in the northwest region when their unit came under attack on Sunday. To Zimbabwe, where the opposition MDC says some of its activists are still missing following a crackdown by security forces in the wake of last week's election party spokesperson said abductions and raids were being organized to deny the party the chance of challenging the election results. Six people uh, died after MDC Alliance supporters clashed last Wednesday uh, with soldiers.